So my oh, next no. is... Uh-uh. Okay. Uh-uh. <laughs> I'll, I'm a cutting it off there. I don't want no point of that. Okay. You'd have to have a really nice little pasture. What up, what up, what up? All right, we are in... We are at Mini Bike. What's the name of our podcast? This is episode six of Mini Biking Ain't Easy. We've got producer Zane over here making sure that we are staying on track. We got Bernie's all on the one, twos, and threes. Yo, yo. And we have a special guest today from Down Under. We have Paul Crafton. Are you from Australia? <laughs> Something like that. From Down Under, as in he's right underneath our feet, usually. That's where his station's at. Yeah, making noise. We keep you. We keep you under the bridge. Yeah. So you gotta tell us what do you do for Go Power Sports? I uh, I build all the motors. You build all of the motors. I would say ninety eight percent. Okay. So how long have you have you been with Go Power Sports? Um, I think since around twenty thirteen, if I remember right, twenty twelve, twenty thirteen, whatever the first year that this location started i met dave at the uh swap meet or whatever you want to call it that uh pate no they had it out front oh they just used to, we used to do like a one of those saturday gatherings yeah a little saturday gathering and um me and my dad were driving by if i remember right we stopped in looked around and my dad was like you need to go talk to him so, to get a job? No, just to talk oh, to them, you know, see what they're, what they're all about. Because we didn't know that this was Rockwood. Mm. We didn't know this was Cardi Distributors. We just saw it was another go-kart place. Because you used to get parts at yeah, Rockwood? Yeah, everyone did. whole mm. entire world, you know? <laughs> Especially if you lived around here, you drove down to Rockwood. Okay. You know, you go down there, and they had everything. Yeah, I just talked to them, and I, I kind of told them, introduced myself and then your dad was interested in doing something different and something then, different with what like you know because at the time it was strictly replacement parts and i was 100 percent against you know stock stuff so i was like you know hey dave i uh i take these harbor freight predator motors and i soup them up and you know make them faster and uh and I think I still do the same thing. You know, I can do it from cheap to crazy. And I said, I can start something small, and we can put one of these motors on y'all's go-karts. And he said, oh, sure, I'll try one. And uh, it sold pretty fast. And then he went from two to, you know, I don't know, five a month or something like that. Now I do five a day. <laughs> So to go back, you were you stopped by Go Power Sports because you like why did you come in? Like were you a racer at the time or not really. I mean I was I don't even know how old I was. 20. Ten years ago. <laughs> yeah, whatever that is. 20. Just subtract ten. We got yeah, this. twenty. <laughs> okay. And uh I I think I'd maybe been racing a little bit, not much. Because I didn't really get into that until I was, I don't know, twenty two or twenty three really, mm -hmm. competitively. Um, I was playing around with the yard cart stuff. Okay. But, um, no, we, I think, I don't think we had any intention of stopping in or, you know, I don't remember really anymore, but we just, I, if I remember right, we were just driving by and we saw it. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, let's pull in here and, you know, because like I said, we didn't have a clue that this was what it is. Yeah. You know. But you are a go-kart racer, right? I feel like I've seen like magazine covers of you racing. <laughs> I, I don't know about that. Uh, I used to race. Okay, yeah. So yeah, I when? used to. Uh, yeah. 20, 2015-ish, 14, 2016 is when my prime, I guess, when I was competitive, I actually raced across the country. I um, mean, you know, I, I was still a nobody. Hmm. But on local level, to me, it had kind of gotten boring because I'd win, like, everything. And then... I just decided to start running the bigger shows. You know, the money attracts you. You start looking at these races, and every weekend they pay three thousand, five thousand, ten thousand. I've raced at a race that was fifty thousand to win mm -hmm. in a go kart, and it just attracts you better than a little plastic trophy that they say, "Way to go!" 
So you raced at a young age. Like, what got you and your dad into racing? Was your dad a racer? No, not at all. I, uh, I don't know. I just kind of liked it. I wanted to do it. My dad has, you know, no racing background or anything. At least that's what he's told me. You know, I don't know. I mean, what was the inspiration? Was it Dale Earnhardt? To be honest, <laughs> I don't know. I just, I think one day I, you know, I saw a go-kart probably as a kid and was like, that looks cool. And I've always had, like, competitiveness in me, you know, want to do go fast or, you know, win or whatever you call it. Because you've been building engines for a while, right? I think so. <laughs> Your dad was saying he's I think you'd know better a, than any of us. I, so. uh, I've, I've been doing it since I was, like, a kid, you know, not anywhere of what I know now. You know, more or less just take it apart and can I put it back together kind of thing. But from what I remember, my dad's story is – we had a go-kart in the garage that he'd gotten um, on a trade or something for some work. And we'd begged him and begged him to get it to, can we go drive it? Can we go drive it? And it didn't run. He said one day he went out in the garage, there I am, tore it all apart, trying to figure it out because <laughs> it wasn't running. And uh, I wanted to drive it. And he said, I, you know, I don't know how long it took me, but he said one day he heard it running out there. So there was our go-kart. Now we got something to drive. What age was that? He told me, like, something around 12 years old. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, and I remember being a kid. I had, you know, the we used uh, the Briggs flatheads back then. When we were younger, we did scrap metal stuff. My dad did AC stuff, and he'd, he'd tear down the units, and we'd go to the scrap yard and, um, you know, get the money for it. Well, as a kid, you wander off because that's what you do. You know, you're looking around this, you know, metal jungle. And I'd, you'd see engines laying there. I'd pick them up, put them in the truck. And my dad's like, the whole point of this is getting rid of the metal so we can make some money. <laughs> and then I'm loading in motors. And uh, so we had the Briggs Flathead stuff. And I kind of, you know, messed with that for a while. And I remember as a kid, we, you know, it was not as populated around here back then. And we would uh, we'd drive on the roads and cut through the woods. And we did some crazy stuff. But uh, we had the go-kart. We had that one go-kart I remember building, and it was always the fastest one. If ever a friend got a go-kart, I was like, let's race. You know, I got this fast go-kart, <laughs> and, and it is just a piece of crap. So how quickly did you run out of friends <laughs> to race against? I don't against, think I ever even against. had Sorry. any friends, you know? <laughs> where we add really sad violin music. Yeah, that, I mean, <laughs> thanks. That hurt. <laughs> No, I don't know. Um, probably pretty fast. No, okay. we always, you know, I was always the kid that when I had the money or because I could work on them too. So I'd even find the crap, the trash. I even remember finding stuff at the curb. People were throwing away and I'd take it and I could fix it mm. and I'd have it. At some point in my high school, I remember, I think I had like 12 little dirt bikes because I'd find them or get them really, really cheap and fix them up and all the friends would come over and we'd all ride dirt bikes. But I don't I don't know. I always had the stuff eventually, gotcha. you know. We didn't really have the money to buy it for my mom and my dad, but I always found ways to get them and fix them and yeah. they weren't as nice as the stuff I got now, but they were four tires and a steering wheel. Yeah, so if we could jump to the racing, what uh category were you racing in? What size engine? What types of carts? I really only got into the racing about uh I guess about when clones started getting big, that's what we called them. It's dirt oval, uh, the 196cc class. They call it the clone. Okay. Um, but I pretty much, when I started racing, that's when that class was starting to take off. Um, I think it had been out for maybe a couple of years prior, but it was so small because in racing, no one likes to change unless the whole everybody's changing. Yeah, I mean, when, we were, when I first started, I mean, the clone, you could still buy it at uh, Harbor Freight. And uh, you really didn't do much to them at that point. You just kind of put some valve springs in it maybe and maybe do some carb work. But mm. you just raced it. Now, I don't think you even use anything off of a stock engine. Everything is modified. It's kind of like the ship of Theseus, I want to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. You're going to the, you're gonna have that. to put the explanation right here so people yeah. understand. No, it's the you idea where... all the pieces. Yeah, yeah where if... if um, uh, by the end of a voyage, the idea was if you've replaced every board, every plank on a ship, is it still the same ship? 
because you've been doing it a bit at a time, little bit at a time. So if you're changing this engine at a certain point, is it the same engine you started with or have you created an entirely that's, new engine? That's literally the debate oh, right. <laughs> for everything because everyone says it's stock racing, but nothing is stock about it. And that's even on the top level, you know, stock car racing mm. NASCAR. Where on that car is anything you can go at the dealership and yeah. put on that car? Nothing. Yeah, where's the pieces I can put on my Prius, Yeah, you know? Well, it'd be a... <laughs> They don't have that class right now. Not yet. No. But no, that's, uh, we ridden a clone. Dirt oval is really all I've done. I've dabbled in a little bit of the asphalt racing with the L206 and the Tillotson 225. But I like dirt racing. Mm. It's, I don't know, more my style. Okay. Yeah. Down and dirty. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Okay. <laughs> so you went from racing. And then you stopped racing, but you yeah. still were tuning up go karts, tuning up engines, and sticking yeah, around. Yeah, I'm, I'm still in it. You know, that's what you know. I would, I don't know, fifty percent of my racing, I'd or my engine building is probably racing guys, and most of it's still dirt oval. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, I still help some kids locally, just because I have the racing in me. You know, I have a little bit of knowledge to help especially the younger kids to just jump up a little bit, you know, and learn a little faster than if they did it by themselves. You know, I'm no professional or anything, but I, I seem to, I think I help a little bit. Yeah. So you've, so what you said is that you built all the engines for us. So our, our brand of, of engine out here is the Tiltson, the sp- specifically the Tiltson 212. Mm-hmm. But other than those stock engines, we then offer a stage one, yep. a stage two. Uh, can you go through and tell me what or all the products that you actually touch on Go Power Sports that, that we sell? Or just give me the heavy hitters that people should know about. Um, I mean, we have all the carburetors, the stock replacement carburetors that I rework to make them better. Because uh, there's tons of things you can do to make them better. You know, most of the carburetors come in, they're just meant for, you know, a generator to just run. But there's so many things you can do to make it better. Nearly every engine except the ones that come stock, I guess, that are still, you know, sealed. Mm-hmm. Um, but we've got the, uh, you know, the stock pro setup is a good one we do. Because um, these engines... You know, they're a racing engine, but they still have to meet some kind of EPA regulation. And so they have to limit a few things. So I would go through them and take them out of the box, you know, fix them up a little bit to make them as good as they can for what you got right there. Make sure the linkages are right. Make sure your valves are set right. Make sure um, the coil gap is right. Because all that little stuff does play a big part. And it takes it so someone that doesn't have any idea of anything about a motor, they can go home and they know they can take this engine right out of the box, put it on their kid's go-kart or mini bike, and it's going to be the best that they can get out of a stock motor where you go to Harbor Freight or anywhere else, and half the time they have to mess with it uh, to get it to run even on the go-kart, just stock, you know, and it helps save a bunch of emails and phone calls too. So this pro setup is available for the Tillotson stock pool start and the electric and the start. Electric start. Does that also have a brake and dyno option, or is it no. just the pro setup? Yeah, just the pro setup, because that's a stock motor. Um, the brake in and dyno that we offer is for really any motor that we offer. I mean, we could do it, I guess, on there. Um, but it's probably not worth it on the stock motor, you know. We tell you what horsepower it is on the website, you know. Our, we've dynoed so many of them, and we I constantly dyno new serial numbers to make sure they're still good quality, you know, and there's still the horsepower that we talk about. Um, Cause we want to do offer a better product than everybody else. Mm-hmm. But the, the dyno and tuning that, or the break-in and dyno, they, uh, that's for stage one, stage two and up. You know, we do a lot of the stage one is, I think the stage one is even offered just a click on the website. We already have them. So let's talk about that stage one tilts and what do they get? So there's the stock. They yeah. can get the pro set up to where you go through and make sure it's going to be in, in usable. Yeah. yeah. It, as optimal as it can be. Yep. And then the stage one tilts, and what do they get with that? The stage one is our uh, st- uh, stage one kit that we offer, but I also go through and uh, take the governor out, 
we make, like I said, the same as Pro Setup too. We we adjust the the coil gap to make sure it's it's where it needs to be. The valves, you know, we check it over to make sure everything's good. And also, once I'm in the motor, because I got to open the motor up to take the governor out, I just do a visual check too. You know, make sure the bolts are tight, right, and stuff like that. Um, since they are mass produced, you never know. Mm-hmm. I haven't ever had any issues with any of them from the Tillotson line, but when we used to do the other brands you know for people um i'd see weird stuff in them all the time i've opened them up before and there was a chunk of styrofoam inside the motor Mm. i mean if you were to take that home and never open it and run it the motor would have you know potentially blown up and you'd have never known why yeah and that was from the factory that way um but the the stage one is really our go-to it's you know for the for the initial investment gives you all the power you can for what you know with very little um, parts, and they're reliable. So then you go to the stage two tilts and engines. Yeah. What do they get from there? The stage two kit as well, as well as the stage one stuff. Um, but, you know, it's the, all the billet upgrades. Mm. So um, now all the internals are going to be yeah. swapped out. Yeah. Okay. You get the, the billet rod, the flywheel. I go through and do the carburetor different uh, than the stage one just because of the RPM change. The cam is different. And depending on what stage two, you know, we're building is what cam you get, either the, the 265 cam or the Mod 2. Okay. Yeah. And then we just fix that option to where they can add the 22 Makuni on there. That's right, yeah. So that's like, yeah, <laughs> I can't believe we haven't done that before. <laughs> you know, it's everybody, that's like the number one, especially on the mini bike guys, everyone does the stage two and then they put a Makuni on it. Mm-hmm. Or... They do a stage one, and the next step is a Makuni. And now we've done this for years, and I've never offered that. Hmm. <laughs> what kind of improvement does the Makuni carburetor offer? Everyone's got their own opinion. Um, you know, if you have a good stock carburetor set up, they're good. They are good. Um, to me, they might even be, I wouldn't say better, but they start a lot easier. The Makunis, they have their method that you have to use to start them. But once they start, they're much better. You know, bigger carb. They got the different fuel circuitry to, to work better. The Makuni, I would probably say you're going to gain at least a horsepower over a good, you know, stage two stock style carb mm. to the Makuni. Um, which on these motors, when you're only talking about 10 horsepower, one whole horsepower, you know, that could be a, you know, let's say 100 horsepower in a car. Um, and all you're doing is changing one little part, uh, you know, a hundred dollar part or a hundred dollar kit to bolt on there and you can get a ton more horsepower. Um, but most people like it cause the throttle response is, is a little bit snappier, um, looks cooler, <laughs> you know, um, and with, uh, different intakes out there, you can tuck them into your bikes a lot cleaner and, you know, it helps, it helps riding. And mm-hmm. I know on all of our race bikes, we, tuck the carburetors and it just saves the air filter you can run the air filter for hours and hours and hours and they don't ever get dirty you know when they stick out past your you know your knees and you ride through the dirt once it's already dirty yeah so you know it's uh it's a pluses and minuses it's definitely more pluses than minuses so now like let's say for someone like me who's yeah, I'm gonna be buying my first mini bike in the next month. I know. How long have you worked here? Yeah, man, I'm busy <laughs> editing, bro. I don't have time to go riding mini bikes and brapping around. Okay. So let's say someone like myself who's gonna yep. be getting their first bike, what would you recommend that I start with? <laughs> Two twenty-five. I mean, that's all. I... <laughs> okay. <laughs> then you can go straight straight to it. Okay, so just uh, I put a two twenty-five and I just sit on that and that's it. Yeah. Frame. The, uh, I don't know, the, uh... Because I'm well, looking at the Rascal right now, but I know that a lot of people like the MB200 or I the Hurricane. I guess it depends on what your what type of riding you're going to do. Okay. You know, if you're going to be the, the neighborhood warrior, just cruising around the neighborhood, the Rascal's great. Hmm. It's small, you know, it goes in your, in your garage easier, doesn't take up a lot of square footage, uh, and they ride good. Okay. But... If you're going to cut through the neighbor's grass, you know, and jump off the curbs or go trail riding or something or race at the, or go power 180 race. Hit the half pipe. Or something like that, too. Yeah. You know, you're probably going to want the the Hurricane. Okay, gotcha. So Hurricane 225, 
And that's the go-to right there for that's me. That's the go-to, really? I mean, if I'm talking stock, <laughs> I'm talking about a 225 in a hurricane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so with those engines, you have the Stage 2 tilts and engine. So the, the next engine up, like you just touched, and touched on, would be the 225. Is that the one that you also put together? I put together our kit. Um, you know, there are a few other options out there, like the 225 RS is actually assembled all by Tillotson for a spec class. Still a really great motor, but it's designed for something. But ours, the 225 Go Power Sport motor, um, I put all those together as well. And that's the way to go, because what's going to be the difference between that Stage 2 uh, Tillotson engine and that Tillotson 225? Don't get me lined, but I want to say it's like four horsepower, five horsepower. It's huge. It's a huge, huge difference. And, and if you got a little bit of want to or a little bit of skill, you can port the head or get a little bit bigger carburetor too on the 225 and it makes another one or two more horsepower for very little money. You know, it's, the 225 is really, to me, that's what I call stock anymore. You know, everyone, there's still a ton of 212 reasons to have the 212, but for me, you know, I'm, running the bigger bike i just put the 225 on there i guess because the 212 is just more economically friendly it's a lot cheaper yeah i mean you're talking easily half the price yeah uh, and they're still fast i mean you put it in like uh the doodle bug frame i don't know what about the doodle bug but you put a stock 212 it'll flip over as soon as you hit the gas mm-hmm. i mean you literally have to cruise it when anyone posts the doodle bug frame with a 212 i'm like be careful yeah. Be careful, because I've owned three or four. I've seen my dad wreck them a hundred times. Just starting it, it'll flip over. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the doodle bug is, it's the it's your worst nightmare with the 212. You might stick to the 100cc on those guys. Yeah. You know, putting a 212 on the MB200, just like, you know, the stock motor, everyone gets bored of them eventually. Yeah. Uh, but the 225, I have yet to get bored on it. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I can take it anywhere and have fun all right we're going to take a quick break we will be back after these announcements here's our 98 cc gasoline engine sometimes the 212 is a little too much and the 79 cc just isn't enough power so our 98 cc engine is an excellent addition to our lineup This powerful small engine is great for young riders or adults looking to cruise. The 98cc engines are on sale for a limited time for $79.95. Get yours while they last. All right, we are back. All right, so we just talked about the Go Power Sports 225 Tillotson engine that you make and is probably one of the best engines that, that we provide. I think so. But you just went to the Big O Tribute, which is a big go-kart race out in North Carolina, I believe. Yeah. Can you tell me about that race and what you provided? Uh, yeah, the Big O is um, its like one of the biggest modified races for go-kart oval racing in the whole entire country. It's a commemorative race for Otis Merritt. He used to build the modified flathead motors. Um, I think Honda specifically, if I remember right. But it's turned into this massive modified race people from all over the country show up and they 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 try to prove that they have the best modified motor you know they're taking these six horsepower motors and putting you know whoever's dyno you want to compare to 30 40 horsepower whatever it is so they're essentially ticking time bombs out there you know and they run them for 30 laps and hope they stay together i think we went first year i think there was what 50 or 60 and then like 12 finished Wow. Yeah. I mean, they're bombs. You know, you're, you're taking everything to the complete max. But we hooked up with uh, Preston Sparks, and uh, he, he uh, gave us the shot, let us prove that we can build just as good a motor as anyone else across the country. So he provided the go-kart yeah, and the driving skills. Everything, really. We just supplied the little tiny motor there on the side. I mean, oh. he did everything. They put it on. They, they set the cart up. You know, they did everything. I just merely gave them a little tiny motor to hopefully keep them in the race. Okay, so the, so this tiny motor is a 225 Tilton. It was a 225. Um, it, you know, it started off as the 225. You know, same block, same piston, 
um, everything we sell online. Um, we did use the uh, DED billet head, um, which at the time was really like the only one. Now there's a few other ones that are out there, like the MoFlo that we're selling, which is great. Uh, that's what's going to be on there this year. Nice. <laughs> and uh, it, was, it was essentially a 225 with, you know, bigger head uh, or bigger valves with a billet head, special camshaft, stuff like that, you know, because those motors run like 10,000 RPMs plus. I've even heard all the way up to 12,000, but wow. I, I ain't doing all that. That's That sounds scarier to me. It might be cool to watch it one time run 12,000, but not 30 laps consistently around the track and not finish the race. Yeah. But um, we got that motor built, gave it to him, and pretty much gave everything that we got in it. And uh, it, it ran really well. It ran really well. It, that race is, you know, like any big race, it's kind of a luck is involved and he just didn't have it at the end in the feature we made we made the feature i think we were like 12th or something like that and uh the guy right in front of us spun out and, you know at 60 70 miles an hour whatever it is you have no option except to just not you know be there you gotta stop and try to turn or get away from the wreck by second practice he was like five right he was up front for a while yeah you know, and, and I trust him to do whatever he does. You know, I raced a little bit of the dirt oval, and I know how fast that track can change. And those guys, they, this is what they, you know, more or less do for a living. They, it may not be getting paid as a job, but they're there every weekend. They have every resource you would need to run at that level. And, you know, the, the top, let's just say the top 20, they're probably all within a couple of tenths of a second away. I mean, just, I don't know, you know, have a hiccup. I mean, you hiccup while you race, I bet you would slow you down out there. You know, just barely turning the wheel a little bit, you, you could lose two or three positions. Um, so it's, it's, a huge, it's a huge deal just to make the race. It takes a, a, takes a, a good mode or two, and a, but it, the main thing is the carts. If you don't have the good cart, and, and Preston provided that for us to prove – we got what it takes because you're going up against what other engines if it's not if they're not Tillotson's. I would say most of them, especially because that's who the class sponsor is, is uh, PPM. They have an all billet animal motor. Hmm. Um, I think literally every part on there is probably billet or titanium. I mean, there's there's no off the shelf production part. They all build everything they have. You know one one at a time kind of thing and they allowed Tillotson to race up against them in this yeah. race yeah and it's from... called the overhead valve so as long as it's an overhead valve engine you can race up to 14 and a half cubic inch okay so it's pretty much like a 225 um some people like bigger pistons and shorter stroke some people think more stroke and uh, smaller piston you know everyone that's why we all make a living at this you know we all have our different theories and what works the best and that's what you know keeps this kind of stuff going we all have what we think is best um, and they do their thing we do our thing and the 30 other people out there that are building motors for this race they do their thing there was people out there from the craziest looking thing you'd ever seen to you know it looks one of the guys out there looked like a rocket ship i mean it, it the whole motor was We'll throw the link up right here. Pretty if they sweet. Wanna yeah. Check it out. Yeah. I was gonna say, watching that big O video was like it looks like a bunch of little speed racer cars. It looks like oh, something out of a cartoon, man. They're flying. And but they're so like so specific and aggressive looking. It's like yeah. little rocket ships just shooting around this dirt track, man. I mean, that's essentially what they are. You know, the the stock clone racing on those big tracks are still going pretty fast, but you know, those are you know, ten, twelve horsepower. These, you know, 30, 40 horsepower, whatever, you know, dyno you're putting them on, they're not even the same category. Mm. They sound different. They run different. They, they're just different. It's a huge deal. So do you see the future of kart racing going in that direction where it becomes more and more like an arms race of who can do the craziest thing to it? Or where do you see it going? It's, it's stock racing. Okay. Stock racing is how it always is. There's always classes. There has to be classes of... This is all you can do. Do it the best you can. Okay. You know, if if it was run what you brung more or less, which they have that class, you just show up with whatever you want and race. 
you know, it, and, and that stuff is fun, but a million dollar company putting together a go kart, they're going to have more resources than Bobby down the street in this garage that. Shout out to Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> finding, you know, finding a go kart in the. On, on, on Craigslist or whatever you Going to the it. junkyard and it, some I don't think 12 year old kid picking out. Yeah, some you ain't engines. doing that no more. Oh, okay. Uh, that was a long time. I don't even know if you can even walk around in a scrapyard anymore. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, stock racing is always going to be, I think, in my yeah. opinion, the class. You know, and, and the numbers show it too. You know, you go to a big, big show, you know, wherever in the country, you're always going to have more stock motors than you are the modified stuff gotcha so you talked about the new head and you're going to be at the big o tribute this year 2023 yeah. yeah are there any other changes we can expect from this engine <sighs> to be honest i don't think so i think i hit the head on the nail this past 2022 with what we built and it's it's but it's something i build every day almost you know i probably build one of those motors a week you know maybe not that exact configuration but it, it more or less the short block for sure and, and I think that part's pretty much done you know I can do those all day long but the head and you know the carburetor setup is going to be what makes the power and that's what changes you know that's the change from short track to big track to the weekend warrior to the pro level like what Preston runs you might get lucky here and there um, running one of our, what I call maybe like a weekend warrior kind of motor, still super fast, but it's not designed to run 10, 11,000 RPMs for that amount of time. You know, most of those weekend guys are going to turn their stuff 8,500, 9,000 RPMs, and, and it's fast. But put that same motor out there against these guys at the big O, I don't, I don't think you have a chance. So with our 225 tilts and that we do offer, yep. if someone wanted to go crazier, you then do custom builds? We do all custom. We can do custom anything from the 196 size motor, you know, your your stock motor off of your MB200, send it in, we can work on it, all the way up to the 225. And I mean, we even do 3-inch, which is the, the go-to right now for drag racing. You know, all the guys running the drag racing mini bikes right now through the country. If you're not on a three inch, you're you're not fast. And that's a three inch piston. Okay. Yeah, the piston gotcha. itself. And on, on the Tillotson block, that's about as big as you can go. I mean, you can get a little bit bigger, but you know, it's only gonna get so much. You know, you can only go so big on these little tiny motors. The three inch is the minimum anymore on the drag racing stuff. How does someone then take the next step? If they want that engine, how do they get there? How do they get in contact with you? We have a link on the website. You can click on it actually. It does cost money to get it, but all that does is secure you a spot um, because my schedule is super busy with all the motor builds across the whole entire country. I'm building people's motors. If I had, you know, 500 people say, call me and want to build a motor but aren't 100 percent serious yet i'm not going to be able to build those other 500 you know motors that i build during the year so all this does is it just gives you a, a spot in line you know it says hey i'm ready to do this and you don't even have to know exactly what you want just have an idea or the type of riding or driving you're wanting to do and i can build the suit hmm. or call up front talk to the guys they can maybe even point you in the right direction of something that they know I've already built before, and that could be exactly what you want. Everything I build is not on the website. There's, I mean, I think every motor I've built so far in the last two weeks is not even on the website. It's just something someone had in mind, and I'm, I'm like, yeah, that's that sounds great. Like the stage two with the Makuni 22. <laughs> the, it's like our number one thing we sell as far as parts online, but I've never put one of those together. Guy called in and said, can you do this for me? Yeah. Why didn't I think of that? And here I am. You know, now we're adding it to the website because that's like the perfect, mm. perfect combo. And it's not crazy expensive. Yeah. You know, you start getting into some of this stuff, it's expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you, you can't get away from it. It's no different than building a top fuel dragster. It's the same amount of work. It's just one, one cylinder, though. So it's, I guess... 
an eighth of amount of time. You know, there's only one cylinder versus eight, but it's still the same kind of work. Yeah. You know, cylinder prep, ring prep, everything prep, you know, it's tons and tons of work. But the cool thing is that the cost of entry to get into this is a lot lower than if you were going to build a oh, drag it's racer. A fraction of the price. Yeah, you like, can have just as much fun. Yeah. Just as much fun. I, you know, I don't know where everywhere in the country can you go to the drag strip and race your mini bike, but I know they have two drag strips here that on certain days they allow mini bikes to race on the drag strip. That's freaking sweet. Yeah. Then you can go out there with a $100 mini bike and drag race. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And with these engines on a mini bike, we just saw you at the GPS 180. Yep. And I like to call it from first to last because you were literally the first. That you were number one. Freaking fast, <laughs> man. You weren't last, but you didn't finish as well as you did. So talk to us about the GPS 180. How was your? What was your setup? What What did you race out there? Well, ours was custom, kinda. It started off as a uh, MB200 frame, and we started frame off this time. Last year, we took the Hurricane and built off of that, which was a great bike. Jeremy Kozata has it now, and it still makes me sad. He posts a picture every now and then, and I'm like, please stop. Because <laughs> it was a great bike. It ran really, really well, and that was that Texplex, and we were jumping them big old jumps like a full-size dirt bike, and it was perfect. But me and Junior were like, Let's build something perfect. Everything we know, everything we think we know, let's do it. And then we, you know, we screwed up like the first <laughs> hundred feet off the line. But we won't get into, you know, that that's racing though. We won't get into all that. It's could have been our fault, could have been Stan's fault, but <laughs> wow. over those rocks. Yeah. yeah. It's in the video. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you clearly see it. He described it, and I'm like, there's no rocks like that out there. Where did you hit it? Well, when you run off the course. <laughs> but, uh, no, we built, uh, it was a custom um, bike, but it had everything we sell or are about to sell at the time. Yeah, but the it, premium front end. Yeah, the premium front end. We had our nitrogen shocks. Um, we did make a custom swing arm, but it was a stock swing arm. All we did was stretch it out just to give it more, it gave us a little bit more balance. It felt better when, when we did it. It was just an idea, and once we put it on there and rode it, it just felt better, so we left it. But we reinforced the frame, moved a few things to fit, you know, the carburetor we chose, the fender, to help tuck it all in. Because for a three-hour race, not only do you need, you know, longevity build, but you need performance and everything else. But if you're sucking in dirt for three hours, you know, your performance isn't going to last very long. So it goes back to how we're tucking the carburetor and stuff like that. And that fender we are about to start selling, it does all that. Keeps it, the whole tire tucked in. It keeps, you know, you put your air filter right there. It blocks all the dust. I took that air filter off after the race, and it was still clean. <laughs> um, the nice. outerwear was dirty, of course. Yeah. But popped it off, it was clean. You cannot tell me everyone else's was like that. that I mean, most people's were so dirty. Yeah. So the next race is November 11th, 2023, Go yep. Power Sports 180. Are you doing anything different? Are you just going to get that bike back up to where it was at and just don't run over rocks? Or you... That one's kind of messed up now. Are we going to give it a Viking funeral? I'm not even sure. <laughs> you know, it's still sitting down there in the, in the shop. Um, we, we, we glance over it every now and then just to... Shake your heads. Yeah, to cry a little bit at night. I mean, it was just engine bolts, right? Yeah, but after three hours, and I don't know how many wrecks we've put on it. Um, there's a dent and bend on every single part on there now. And I, part of it, you know, it's no one's fault. It was, if anyone's, it's mine, because I was like, we can squeeze two laps in eight minutes, even though our consistent lap time, I think, was nine minutes. Nice. You know, but it was the very last little bit. And as long as, you know, in the race, as long as you pass that start-finish line before the three hours, you can do another lap. And I was like, we got one minute left. Just go. We can do it. You know? And he never came back. <laughs> you know? <laughs> He's still out there at the ranch no, to this day. It, that's how it felt, though, because it was like 20 <laughs> minutes later, Junior finally found him on the side-by-side -side and oh. <laughs> towed the bike home. But it front to back was just, it was jacked. He he sent it. And that's what I wanted. You know, I wanted a whole nother lap, and Stan wanted to do it. So I let him, but... Um, Front to back's bent. 
Um, I know the swing arm is bent. The gas tank almost fell off. The handlebars are all tweaked, which is all replaceable stuff. But I think we're going to do a little something different. You know, we thought this was what we wanted, but we might have went too crazy, you know, because I know the motor was too crazy. Yeah. We, uh, for that track, I don't think we really got over 6,000 RPMs. And it was just, for even what we built, it was just too much. I mean, you'd go around the corner and just burp it, and it'd pull up. Mm-hmm. And it's not worth it. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll be back after these messages. Whoa. Hey, Jason. Everything good? You want us to come back, man, or? How? I'm trying to get these people to figure out how good of a deal this Rascal Light is. Well, you, you tell them it's a super cost-effective kit. Plus, it's a complete mini bike for under 500. Yeah, da, 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 da. I want these people to feel this deal. A deal. A great deal. Hey, maybe we should go get some fresh air. Yeah, go get some fresh air. Any ideas yet? I got it. No, no. Anything? So, what do we think? back so paul i got a serious question for you okay how do you feel about me going 100 miles an hour on a mini bike i don't feel comfortable with that what (laughs) yeah (laughs) is it doable oh yeah it's doable there's guys claiming way way faster now i don't know the distance but you know the quarter mile i'm i'm hearing i've heard up to 105 but on a 5 eighths bearing, I, I don't trust anybody on it. So give me the best shot at surviving 100 miles an hour on a mini bike. What can I do to prep myself? If you were yeah. to wreck, I don't, you'd have to have full race gear. I mean, a full leather suit and a helmet and. A helmet? We're already planning a crash okay. for content, so. <laughs> because <laughs> these guys that are out there in, in California or wherever they're doing it, and they're running in their flip flops and no helmets doing a hundred. Amen. I feel sorry for them. Oh yeah, I feel I sorry mean, for them too. Yeah. Well, it's scary. It was it was interesting because I was out there when when Bernie was shooting that video and we were talking to some dudes and they were like, oh yeah, like three weeks ago some dude uh, crashed and you could like you could still see they had all the flowers and crosses and uh, everything no. out where this dude had just died on the same stretch and they're like. Yeah, you, you know, usually like once or twice a year, someone will, you know, they'll eat it really bad and then no one comes out because everyone's real sad about it. But then like three, four weeks later, we're back out here. We're out here racing. Just buy a little bit of safety gear. Yeah. Your we safety were... gear is literally, it's saving your life. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. We had a guy out there while we were out there crashed on a banshee. It takes that fast. Yeah. I mean, it, you cannot predict it. And I'm the... glad he's doing well. Yeah, so yeah. shout out to Day Day's boy who is now doing well. Hopefully. Please wear a helmet. Please, just a helmet at least. So Jason, wear a helmet no, okay, when you're going yeah. 100. I will buy the full race gear. 
I'll definitely have the helmet on. Yeah. So from there on out, so no five eighths bearings. I mean, they're doing it. I mean, I guess it's okay. Okay, so how about just for Paul specific, what kind of engine should I get from you to run 100 miles an hour on a quarter? I mean, like I said, you're going to do a three-inch. Okay. We're going to do a three-inch build. You know, you're going to build it for the top end because the only way to do it is going to be RPM. You know, it'll probably be similar, um, similar setup to like our big O motor that is going to run, you know, 10, 11,000 RPMs. Um, but you'd have to tune it for more torque, I think, because it's going to go from a dead stop to, you know, full speed, where at the big O, you just sit in that RPM range of, I don't know, five or 600 RPMs, whatever they're at. I don't even remember. It's a very small window that you have to tune for that has to be really good. Where on drag racing, you got to go from a dead stop all the way to that in a quarter mile. So for them, some of those tracks are a quarter mile. And they're just staying that same speed where you got to go from a dead stop in one lap. You got to be able to go 100 miles an hour. It'd be a little bit different setup, but um, to be honest, I've never done it. So I don't know. What kind of cam am I running? Not the hot 265. Okay. <laughs> as much as we love that cam, that won't, that won't work. It'd probably have to be one of the special cams we have down there. I don't think we sell anything capable of doing that speed off the shelf. And can can I run just regular gas off of this, or do I have to run methanol? I would say methanol. And if you're wasting anybody, we may have to put a little nitro in it too. But well, no, my, my goal is just to hit 100 miles an hour, oh, not just yeah, to then. blow the competition. And a quarter mile? Yeah. Yeah, methanol. Be fine. Okay. Barely hit 100. Can right. you put nitro on a... Oh, yeah. Oh. I mean, Jimmy, it... Jimmy's run... Uh, Nitrous kits on them. Oh, that's right on uh, on Casper. Yeah, yeah, or whatever it's called. It's called Casper. Yeah. Okay, that's the name. What carb am I running? Twenty four <laughs> flat slide, twenty eight. No, I don't know. To be honest, I don't. I, I don't know. I'd probably say you could. I don't know. Like I said, I never built one. <laughs> I, I'm not. <laughs> I I get nervous when people be trying to ask me, what do I do to get a hundred? Don't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 60 is freaking fast on these. When people say they're doing 60, I don't think most of these people are. Because mm. it's, I've done 60. It isn't fun. It is fast. The fastest I've gotten was 73 with the speedometer on my phone. And I have video footage of it. And that was sketchy. Yeah. That was on like our stage five Predator engine back in the day. Back in the day. On a Mega Moto 80 frame with the 15 inch street tires. Okay. Uh, it, I mean, this thing was hopped up and it was, I had to have a long straightaway. Yeah. But 73 was way too fast. It's fast. If one bearing is bad or you hit sand or anything on the street, it's over. It is over. I don't. So with that being said, how does he do it? How do we get him there? <laughs> he has 27 more miles per hour that he needs to get above his current record. Well, we've learned a lot since then. How long ago was that? This was maybe two or three years ago. Okay. Okay. Well, maybe not then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> can we can we throw that footage over? Yeah. I'll okay. Definitely yeah. Give you that footage. Uh, I don't think I've learned much since then. Well, how about the frame? So I was on a Mega Moto 80 with 15-inch street tires. You think I think that'd still be a fine combo because at, at the quarter mile, you're not worried about takeoff. As long as it goes, you're, you know, you're pretty much fine. Um, it's not like the 100-foot stuff we just did or the 330-foot or something like that where you have to have a really good launch to even get anywhere. Um, quarter mile is a lot, and you can make up a lot of mistakes on the top end, I think. Especially if your goal is only to do 100. It's not to beat the guy next to you and do 100. You'd have to have a really big head, really big valves, I think. Um, big carburetor. I, I mean, I'm thinking you'd have to have at least a 30, 30 millimeter. Okay. You can maybe do it with the 28, but you wouldn't be able to do it anywhere under the 28. Um, might as well put a 34 on there. Yeah. You know? We're, we're just looking for top end power. But we could do it. How much would you have to change to the, the little drag school motor you just built to get that to 100 everything everything yeah the Great tire, job on that by the way appreciate it uh the gear ratio is you know 
for a hundred foot and we only raced it Not 60 either. feet, you know? Um, and some of the times I think he was letting off. You'd have to change everything, I think. I don't even know if that tire is tall enough because I think that was only a 13 inch. Mm -hmm. um, so I would even maybe put the, uh, the 15 inch on there. The street tire, that ultimate street tire is the one you're talking about? Yeah. That's a pretty good tire. You know, it has a good profile and it's tall and I think that'd be a pretty good one uh, to do. But gear ratio is going to come into a play and uh, just have to have a good smooth running motor that's going to turn the RPM. Gear ratio, I was thinking I would most likely run the 420 changes because it would be thicker. Okay. I would then probably do like a 12 to a 48 and have a 4 to 1 gear ratio. I don't know if that's – if I should go more 5 to 1 because a quarter no. mile. I'm wondering when I'm going to rev out. I guess It'd testing be a while. it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's way down there because, you know, that motor you ran probably only turned 7,500, 8,000, yeah. you know, and we're going to turn it, let's say, 11,000 because it's doable now. It's, you know, I don't even worry about them at the 10, 11, but for some reason when they start talking about 12,000, I'm just out. That's mm -hmm. just – I don't see anyone making any power at 12,000. And, you know, at, at, at the, the big O motor that we had – Peak horsepower was 99, um, and it was consistent. So, you know, 9,900 or 10,000, whatever you call it, that's where we made power. That's mm -hmm. where we were tuning for. So, to me, 11 is all right. Mm -hmm. But, you know, a stock Tillotson, you know, is designed to turn 3,600 RPMs. So that's triple. And I just, I don't see it. I'm excited to see it. Where, where around here could we even do a quarter mile? We're going to go. Yellow belly, even though it's an eighth, I think there's enough runoff for a quarter is what I'm being told. What was the what was the track that Jeb told us about? It's like oh. X, X Factor or something out in? Somewhere out east of us. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm not, I think that's an eighth do you also, mean right? Oh. Tex Factor? Tex Factor. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I don't we don't know anybody with, like, a uh, runway. It'll be a grass runway. That's also my oh, next. No. Uh-uh. Okay. <laughs> uh-uh. I'm a cutting it off there. I don't want no point of that. Okay. You'd have to have a really nice little pasture. So you don't think I could hit a hundred? Do you think I can hit a hundred on the hurricane? No. It's got to be. Mm -mm. It's got to be pavement. Yeah. Low, low I mean, you ground. could probably hit a hundred eventually, but I'm not seeing it no quarter mile. Not on the hurricane. Hmm. Not in the grass. Hmm. Okay, and I don't want no part of that. What about like a drag? Like a <laughs> would he have to like do like a like slammed drag no. style body? No, he can just do. No, the... you can watch most of those guys. I know in Compton area they've got the GTS frame, mm. you know, and that's I I you know even can you know compare it to like the Rascal, you know, it's not a low profile frame like the um, RCF drag bike they got now. Yeah. Um, that thing is, you know, stretched, full-blown dragster. Yeah. Um, these are just, I mean, heck, they look like cruisers. Um, but that's the go-to, from what I can tell out there. But it, like I said, I don't know. No. I'd like to be a part of it if we could do it under a safe, I don't know, because I'm, I'm not into the crazy stuff anymore. I like to build the crazy stuff, but once I ship it, don't tell me what you're doing with it. You just <laughs> just wash Yeah, wash my hands. That's it. But think about how much validity we would have if someone from Go Power Sports can just have an idea of wanting to go 100 miles an hour, and then we get you to build the engine. We have Taylor to start building our, our drag frames, and we put it all together, and I hit a hundo. Wouldn't that be nuts? Uh, I'm in. Like I said, if we could do it on a drag strip, we do the the safety gear. Mm. I'm all for it. So so I guess that the only other thing you've you've done the racing where you're going pretty fast, right? Yeah. So not a hundred. Not a hundred. No, no. But what advice do you have for someone when you're operating at these high speeds for an extended period of time? What it, like are you, conditioning? It's basically you just have training. to know what you're doing. Okay. These guys that run like it, for my experience, the let's just say pro kart level. Yeah. Um. You know, I can't say all of them go to the gym and do anything like that, but um, and everyone's a little bit different. But I know when I did it, I did I did cardio. Um, you know, I didn't really work out a lot. You know, weights and stuff, but cardio is a big thing. Hmm. You know, the guys in Florida, I mean, that's all they talk about is cardio. 
they just they're or they're in the go kart three or four hours a day, you know. Yeah. And there's kids out there. They go home from school. They go to the track. They race for three or four hours, and they go home and do homework. Mm. You know, that's their that's their priority. At that that kind of speed, one wrong move and it's over. Okay. Uh, one wrong dip in the ground. You hit sand or something. It's over. My old drag bike, I know when I had it geared wrong, it had, I had like a two-stage deal where I could turn the steer, turn the throttle and then pull over and turn it again. It had like a little notch deal. And that's what I use for like launch control. And uh, if I didn't use that, it was uncontrollable. Mm. Or if you hit the gas and you don't let the bike catch up with itself is how I call it and then you were to do the second stage and get into the to the full throttle too fast it's to spin the tire yeah. uh, and you could be doing that 100 feet down the strip and if you were to spin the tire too much or or whatever the whole bike could come out from underneath you and you wreck it's it's all a big safety deal in my eyes it's you know I think any of us can build any you know the mini bike to do 100 eventually you know, the quarter mile limits it, so you got to have something pretty decent. But if you don't have the safety gear, and even at 60, I mean, I've seen some pretty nasty stuff at 60. We'll insert those videos here. I'm yeah. just kidding. <laughs> of him being 60 years old and watching something <laughs> nasty. <laughs> I don't, uh, I don't know. I like to do the fast motor stuff, but I hate, I don't want any part of riding it anymore. I like the 30 mile an hour, just a little electric scooter at the house. <laughs> how, how often do you get to ride for fun nowadays? You know, sometimes when everyone uh, everyone leaves here at the shop, I'll put around the the uh, backyard. Yeah, the yeah, the back back there um, on occasion. Mm. But it's you know, let's say five hours a year. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you don't get you don't like go. I know your son has that Hot Wheels car that you set up for him. Yeah, but I just use a little remote control. Oh, you control it. For I just him. stand there at the <laughs> at the garage and I watch him. The same thing with, with my son's Jeep. <laughs> Sometimes he'd be looking back for me and be like yelling at me. I'm like, I'll be there. <laughs> but when he's you know, yeah, 300 yards off. I mean, in a couple of years though, you guys could go on some rides together. He's learning. It'll be nice. Yeah. yeah. He drove the he drove the tractor the other day by himself. Well, I mean, I was sitting there and he was in my lap, but he had the steering wheel control in it, yeah. and he didn't hit the fence. So okay, yeah. there you go. We got close once. Yeah. But he's learning. He's learning <laughs> how a steering wheel works. Okay, nice. Um, I don't think he you know, he know doesn't understand uh, mm. what happens when you wreck, but. Yeah. He hasn't wrecked. He'll find out. No, he won't. Not in the <laughs> tractor. <laughs> Please not in my tractor. But no, he uh I wouldn't let it happen anyway. I mean I'm on I'm controlling the throttle. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. But anyways. Jason, uh, do you ride with your kids? They ride in my lap. We have little mini bikes and they they'll sit in my lap and we'll go cruising. Yeah. We do okay. the four wheelers and the dirt bikes and stuff Ooh, too. Nice, nice. Know. Okay. Yeah. He loves a four wheeler. Yeah. So just wondering, so for 2023, we got some new products coming out. Is there anything you're excited for? If you don't have anything, I can name a few. What do you got? The <laughs> the Juggernaut Stage 1 Tuner Kit. Okay, yeah. So, well, okay. that's already out. But what? why would someone need it? <sighs> why not? I mean, it's literally what everyone has been wanting for since we pretty much released it a couple years ago. It helps put the engagement into the torque curve where we need it for these engines, in my opinion. I've used it on the trail bikes, on the drag bike, on the flat track bikes. Never once did anyone go, well, we shouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. It always was like, oh, this is so much better, so yeah. much better. And one of the flat track bikes even had the, uh, the next kit already on it. And, I mean, it looked like a beast out there. Nice. I mean... Paired up with the 225, I mean, you could see the two different bikes, the way they responded when he gave it the gas, and it is, you could tell it was worth it. And then we got a new head that you're starting to push where, I don't know if we came up with a name for it. We haven't come up with a name, and that was on my, it's on my board down there to ask about it again, because oh, I'm like, thought, we dropped the ball on this. I thought Cleverhead was already done. No. Okay, no Cleverhead. But, so this head, whatever name we come up with. Yeah. 
Tell me more about that because, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's our new cast head. Um, you know, there's a few companies out there that have, you know, they're, they're, they're having a head made, you know, specific for them. And I've always wanted to do something, and I finally found a company willing to do it in a, a volume that we can afford. And it's it's just a really good cast head. It's it's performance based, but it leaves room for DIY. Uh, the Makuni can mount right up to it, so you don't have to have all this manifolds and sticks way out. You know, you can mount it pretty much straight to the head. And it and it's in in the in the stock form, it's still cheap. You know, it's not the cheap thirty, forty dollar basic head, but it's not a basic head. Yeah. Um, you know, they're gonna come out um, stock with uh, twenty eight and a half, uh, twenty five valves already ready to go, which is kind of like what we call our stage four. Um, already milled down, it has a small chamber, um, and the ports are just better. Yeah. Everything about it is better. You know, and, and no head on the market is perfect. Even the guys with the billet heads, there's still people out there reporting them. You know, we can make them good, but everyone has their opinion what is better. But this is a really, really good stock cast head, and I've used a few of them already from our sample batch, and I can't be more happier, you know. Could we call it the super head and get <laughs> Kareen Steffens? <laughs> To there promote it. Again. <laughs> <laughs> just go ahead and cut yeah, that just out. leave it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, he's editing this. So. I'm the one editing this. So uh, I'll keep that joke for me. That's one, that one's for Zane. So you've got a good head that we've got to come up with a name. Yeah, then we need a name for it. Then we started pushing your top end billet heads that you're talking about, like the MoFlo. The MoFlo. Tell yep. me about those. It's a. I hate to call it a stock style, but I, I guess that's what you would call it. You know, it, it bolts right up to any clone style, Honda style motor. You can still reuse the rocker setup you're already running. You don't, well, I don't recommend, you know, the stock rockers, but if you got the Champions or uh, any kind of roller rockers like the Gauge, um, they bolt right in. You don't have to go buy something fancy or pay extra to have that company's rocker arm set up only. It comes with, you know, the... The heads we're selling right now have the 3225 in them, so which is already a huge valves. And I've even heard that he's working on uh, putting even bigger valves in it, which is very exciting. Um, and they're not crazy expensive. You know, when we first started doing this, the billet heads were $1,000, $2,000, $3,000. And there's still some of them out there that cost that much. But these, I think we're selling them, what, 700 bucks? Yeah. And like I said, you can take your head off, take your rockers, put it on this. You know, you probably have to adjust the uh, put, you know, change the push rods, but that's it. You're done. Put your carburetor on it and and be done. And it's guaranteed an improvement. It's a really good head. It's really nice quality. You know, made in America. It's a good piece. Can you tell me where we're at with billet blocks? <sighs> Up and down. Okay. You know. We we dabble in it and then we lose, we get sidetracked. It's been in the works now for years. I haven't yet to see one hit the market that's what we have designed, you know. And there's really none that are actually being produced, clone wise. Like I said, the PPM motor is the the animal one, which is a good piece, uh, it, but it's just not our market. You know, our market is the clone Honda, and. I've yet to see one hit the market that makes me want to stop working on ours, but we're just so busy, I guess, and we just keep losing track. But it's in the works. It's in the works. So we are now finished with the podcast. Our time is up. You did a great job, even though you took a 40-minute break in between. Oh. <laughs> no biggie. We'll cut that all out. No, we'll but. leave it in. We'll leave it in just because it's you. <laughs> But we want to appreciate you. I know that you're super busy with all the parts that you do for Go Power Sports. Thank appreciate you for it. all you do. Yeah. Thank you for coming up. And also, thank you for taking the time to yeah. do these goofy videos you, every once in a while, too. Yeah. And I, I, I hate it, but I have fun. Yeah. This, is, this isn't really me. I don't like to do the camera stuff, but y'all make it... Uh, uh, I still think one of my favorite times here at Go Power Sports in the less than a year that I've been here was when we shot that thing, the the liquid death dino thing. 
I had so much fun uh, with that. It was and like fun. you were like it was just what I say. I still get joy out of seeing that one. You took I did not see that coming together. <laughs> <laughs> there was so many I mean, he had it from different views and let's do this again and do that again. And I'm like, just should just do the video. <laughs> And then it turned out great. Yeah. I will say that too. Oh, I had you. so many people message me just cracking up because it was such a great video. And I'm like, I'm 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 happy too, because I didn't see it coming out yeah. this good. <laughs> Cause I thought it was gonna be terrible. <laughs> but no, it was really good and really funny. I wish Liquid Death would have used that as their main commercial. Shout out Liquid Death. Yeah. Liquid Death. At I us. still drink it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah, it was you guys do a good job. Yeah. Even though I don't see it, because this isn't me. You know, I'm a motor guy, but I don't see the views and the 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 electronic side or whatever, editing, whatever. But, man, y'all really do it right. I don't... Well, thank you for that, being That's, that's past me. There, there's, it's been... <laughs> I just trust the process now. Yeah. I know it's going to come out all right. As, as You're dumb, dumb as stuff as I say, <laughs> and the, the, you know, the lack of... Words that I know to articulate everything, y'all put it together, and at least I look like I know how to make a sentence sometimes. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks again, yeah, and hopefully you have a great rest of the day. Y'all and it, if you guys, make sure you like, subscribe. If you have a comment or have a question for us, leave it down in the comment section below. And remember to ride on. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.